Viewers, it is our pleasure and our honor to be talking to Lieutenant General KJS Dillon, who is also known by the moniker Tiny, Tiny Dillon. And this is his book. Uh, what a fabulous book he has written of his life and times in the army. And it is called Kitne Ghazi Aay, Kitne Ghazi Gay. It's his life story and what an inspiring account he has given of his time uh, in the army. And I, and I want to begin with you, General Dillon Saab. Thank you for speaking to Times Now. And many congratulations on the success of your book. I know that the book has been flying off the shelves. It has become um, a smash hit. Uh, it has set uh, all sorts of records it's on this Mother's Day. And you put out an emotional post and you refer to this. Uh, you lost your mother at the age of three. You write about how your um, father and mother had been attacked by a wild animal on a walk in Nepal and how your mother fought off the animal, but not before she suffered grievous injuries. You refer to her as Sher Mar Ma or the mother who killed a tiger. And yet her influence on your life has been enormous, as you write um, in the book. Tell us more. Generally, all these days when we celebrate, people connect it to their personal lives, their personal mother. Uh, for me, uh, like you rightly said, I lost my mother at the age of three. I'll be talking about her a little later. But before that, on Mother's Day, People always connect to their own mothers, they post the pictures of their own mother and then they feel it's to celebrate their own mother, son or daughter relationship. For me, motherhood goes little beyond. For me, the motherhood is the mother who has nurtured you throughout your life, whatever number of years you spent on this planet and the value system which your mother has given you, the cultural ethos which you have imbibed based on your mother's teachings. So it doesn't end with your own mother. For me, motherhood is Mahabharati, the nationhood. I learn everything from the nature, the environment, the people I meet over the number of years I spent on this earth. I see mother in the Kashmiri woman whom I met and whose children one could get back from terrorism. I see mother on the great I see heights of Himalayas who protect the soldiers against the terrain and weather extremities. I see a mother in the jungles of Manipur where wild animals, one you refer to, and still the soldiers and the people who stay there are protected by the mother nature. I see the mother in the dunes of Rajasthan in spite of extreme heat. The people staying there, the children grow up there, they grow up very strong, their immune system is tremendous. So for me, mother is mother nature and Mahabharati because, like I always say, the mothers give you cultural and ethical values. Hum to wo hain jo paanch hajar saal prani sabhyata ke vanshaj hain. We have our value system, our ethos going back 5000 years. So for me, mother is more than your own biological mother. And now coming to the point of uh, my mother per se, yes. Uh, I was three years old when my mother and father, they went for a walk. They were uh, attacked by a wild animal early in the morning in Nepal. So my father was almost being mauled by that animal and he could see the death in the eyes of the animal. My mother, she stood at five feet eight inches tall. She took off her shawl and swung it around the neck of the animal and started squeezing it till my father was left alone and the animal was killed. She also got injuries which because of an injection which had to be brought from a far distance in those days, I'm talking of December 64, January 65, those injections got bad and she had a reaction to it. She could fight the animal, she could be, you know, she could get off the animal, but she could not get away from that bad injection. So that bad injection uh, took her life. And I always say, in the army, like we say, she died with the boots on. She died fighting for her husband. She died fighting for her family. And that's what a mother is supposed to be. General Dillon, in the book and in your experience is replete with invocations of mother and motherhood. Now, this includes Operation 
ma initiated in jammu and kashmir uh tell us a bit more about this and how it has struck a chord operation ma has its origin in my first tenure in kashmir as a young captain when i was posted in north kashmir in september 1988 uh, and there afterwards i got posted to kashmir a number of times and the last tenure being the corps commander as lieutenant general so in those days there were no mobiles and the letter writing was the main source of communication and every time we killed a local terrorist i'm talking of 88 89 90 now we used to always invariably find a letter in his pocket which he has either written to his mother or his mother has written to him so that told me that kashmiri society the children especially the boys are very close to their mothers any society the child is close to the mother but in kashmiri society it is very pronounced they always listen to their mothers and even now today when they speak on the radio sets or the mobile they always would refer to the mother and hardly there is a reference to the father so that gave me an idea that children listen to their mothers more than the fathers so when i went as a corps commander in 2019 i started something called operation ma which got referred to as operation ma it started off as a you know normal uh, the sort of a operation to get the children who had joined the terrorist tanzims back we approached the mothers we approached the headmen we approached the friends we approached the opinion makers we approached the molvi sahibs to speak to the boy through the mother and try and convince him to come back these initiatives have been taken earlier also but they have not gone through because of we told three things first is the boy there will be no police case or legal case made against the boy second was the identity of the boy will be kept secret and third is we will adjust the boy in some alternate employment either official or through in a uh, civil uh, department or civil areas we live all three promises of us and once we lived up to our promises then more and more boys started coming back and operation ma in that one year could bring back 50 boys back to their family and they are alive and they are going about their life as a normal citizen the basic concept was no mother should be without a child and no child should be without a mother and that concept irrespective of uh, whose mother terrorist mother or soldier's mother every mother is a mother and every child is a child every mother wants her child to be safe so based on this concept operation ma was started and it paid very rich dividends more than the dividends i am so happy that more than 50 young kashmiri boys are alive and with their families today well that's uh, wonderful to know Uh, General Dillon, you served in Kashmir as part of the Rajrif in 1988. Uh, so you saw the build-up to the ethnic cleansing of Kashmiri Hindus that took place, and you write uh, of how in villages in Bandipora and Kupwara along the LOC, half the village youth had been either indoctrinated or taken up arms, or had been making trips to Pakistan-occupied Kashmir. Now, why did the political class before 1990? fail to come to a grip with this situation as it was evolving on the ground what was happening see i written in uh, great detail in my book about what was the environment prevalent in september 1988 and after that and when 19th january 1990 happened the infamous date when the kashmiri pandits were forcibly pushed out of kashmir valley i was present there in north kashmir as a young captain i was fortunate to have saved a few pandit families and uh, that's a different story and it's given in the book in details mm. the point which you made a particular chief minister resigns on 18th of january 1990 and says uh, the terrorism started on 19th january 1990 and then the governor's rule and the uh, rest as we say the history but i proved with facts and figures and percentages that terrorism the feeling of terror the feeling of threat was there the killings were happening the targeted killings were happening and all these were going on and there no way this can happen without the knowledge of the people in the par 
Hmm. The intelligence agencies are with them. The police is with them. And they have all the wherewithal. So this could not have happened on the quiet. Like I write in the book, there are villages in Kupada, Bandipura and other uh, border areas where almost half the population had just vanished and gone to Pakistan occupied Kashmir. As if Kashmir is going to become independent tomorrow. The boys were exfiltrating, going into Pakistan occupied Kashmir, getting the training, coming back with weapons and roaming around. And that time article, this, uh, uh, this uh, Armed Forces Special Powers Act yeah. or Disturbed Area Act was not in force. It was like any other state. The law and order was the state government's responsibility, mm. constitutional responsibility. This was not taken care. And there was an ecosystem, which I always say, that ecosystem is still prevalent, which is gaining from this terrorism or the disturbance in Kashmir. The ecosystem has Hurriyat, ecosystem has ISI, ecosystem has Pakistan Army, ecosystem has terrorists, ecosystem has overgrown workers, ecosystem has sympathizers, ecosystem has narco-terrorists, ne ne nexus, and ecosystem has politicians, it has some vernacular press, and there are also some NGOs. This complete ecosystem does not want Kashmir to become peaceful. If Kashmir becomes peaceful, the terrorism finishes this ecosystem will collapse. So for that reason, this ecosystem starting in those days till today are very much present and giving, as we say, hawa de rahe hai terrorism. In their own ways. They have their agendas, they have their biases. Well, General Saab, you know, we hear of so many boycotts that happen of elections and then of uh, businesses, etc. Now, you talked about the rigged elections of 87, and obviously, politics has also had its role to play. Uh, but in 1989, the Lok Sabha elections was boycotted. There were other calls given, as you, as you have yourself said, by an ecosystem later on. But I, I want to ask you, are these boycott calls in the valley because of a genuine fear of being targeted by terrorists, or is it because there is genuine alienation? What exactly is the reason? Good you brought out this point. See, everyone talks about 1987 mm. rigged elections. No one talks about 1989 parliamentary elections. When this boycott call was given, and Srinagar constituency, parliamentary constituency, only one political party had a candidate. No one else fielded a candidate. So much was the threat, so much was the terror. The percentage was just about 5.5% five, five in the other two constituencies. Whereas in Udhampur, Nagarota and in Ladakh, the percentages were as good as national averages. So there was a terror, there was a threat. Now coming to this boycott of elections, again it's a very well-oiled machinery of this ecosystem. What happens is, the, all the elections in Kashmir, the terrorists give a boycott call. They give a boycott call but they allow this ecosystem which I told you, the Huria, the overground workers and the sympathizers, the terrorists, Tanzims, ISI, they allow few people to vote right early in the morning. There afterwards, they put up the black flags and they tell everyone not to come to vote. So those few people who voted, they make sure that particular party candidate wins. Mm. Now when that candidate wins, they form a government. Then for next five or six years, as it uh, is in there in JNK, they have to make sure they assist or they help this ecosystem. And what has happened over the last 35 years, which again no one is uh, discussing it, may it be a recruitment in the police, may it be a recruitment of the managers or the jobs in the bank, may it be a recruitment in the revenue department, may it be in the horticulture, all the departments of the government, when the recruitment happens at the lowest level, the people who had supported these candidates during the elections, on the name of the boycott call, their sympathizers. You know, they may be jamaat islami they may be Hurriyat supporters, they may be terrorist supporters. Right. They get inducted into the system at the lowest rung of the administration. In the last 35 years, all such people have risen in their own rank and file and come to the mediocre or the medium level of the lower bureaucracy today. They are munchies in Thana, they are SHOs in Thana, they are bank managers, they are principals in the primary schools or middle schools, 
and their patwaris and such like. Now they are the people who have benefited from this ecosystem and they are sympathizers of terrorism. Now they have plagued the lower bureaucracy of Jammu and Kashmir in such a manner that any work, how many times can you go and meet a DC or SSP directly? Mm. Ultimately they are the people who are in contact with the normal public. And they are the ones who do not allow the normal public to get benefited from the schemes of the government. And they keep vitiating the system so that the ecosystem can keep growing. Another point about the ecosystem is, when the Kashmiri Pandits left, the education system crumbled because Kashmiri Pandits were the mainstay of education in Kashmir. May it be primary school, middle school, college, university. And then in the far-flung areas, there used to be schools made of wood, the wooden structures. Terrorists targeted the schools in the name of that security forces are making camps in the schools. They burned down those schools. The schools got burned down, the teachers were pushed out of the valley, the education crumbled, education got affected. The boys, and then came the Huryat and the Hartali Dor, or the Hartals. Hmm. 280 days out of a year, there used to be a Hartal and schools would not open. The young boy, who teacher is not there, the school is not there, the school is not opening. Now, in mass, by the end of the academic year, they would be promoted to the next class. This boy and the girl, they kept getting promoted to 11th or 12th class. Now, when they have to compete for entry into a good college, a good university, a good professional college, or a civil services exam, he or she is not able to compete. Mm. Then, because of 35A, the multinational corporations, could not invest in Jammu and Kashmir. Mm. The job opportunities were not created. And education is not there. There is a politics being played. They, this whole thing got around and this boy of 17 or 18 years of age who has somehow been promoted to 10th or 11th class, now sees no future. His only option left is to pick up a gun and join a terrorist regime. Mm. And this is exactly what the ecosystem wanted. The ecosystem does not talk about why this boy is not well educated. The ecosystem does not talk about why a mother lost her son either to the terrorist bullets or because he was a terrorist or he joined terrorist Tanzim and he died or he was killed. Now, why did that boy join the terrorist Tanzim? Because there was a terrorism, because there was no education, because there was no job opportunities. And this ecosystem has been only talking about Delhi has done this, army has done that. They do not talk about the grief of this mother of a terrorist. They do not talk about the life wasted of this young boy or girl who is not able to get into a good college or get a good job opportunity. Because that does not suit this ecosystem. So this is the tragedy of Kashmir. One has to understand Kashmir to talk about Kashmir. Uh, General Saab, many people say that if you provide the right political solution, everything will be okay. Uh, one of those answers now lies in the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A. Now, before I come to that, I just want to ask you, do you think this is the solution? Or is the problem actually now religious? And therefore, a political solution will have limited results. Rahul, this is another narrative being built by Pakistan. Hmm. Like you talked about Article 370, Article 35A. This is being portrayed as if it is a religious issue. These articles have got something to do with a particular religion. No. Article 370 and Article 335A are not religious provisions. They are administrative provisions. They were applicable to all subjects of the then state of Jammu and Kashmir. They had, uh, like in Article 370 or Article 35A, all the provisions were applicable to all the religious denominations. May it be Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, Christian, Parsi, Jain, Buddhist. They were applicable equally to everyone. But the narrative is being built as if a particular religion is being targeted by removal of Article 370 and 35A. No, sir. If India from 1990, another uh, coincidences or the correlation is 1990 is when Indian economy opened up to the world. Mm. The MNCs came in, the foreign investments came in, the job opportunities came in, the blue collar jobs 
were glory and that is where the youngsters were going into jobs other than sarkari nokri all over india other than jammu and kashmir because when 1990 the economy was booming jammu and kashmir the terrorism had started in 87 88 89 90 either economy is booming and that side the economy is going in a downward trend and this again matched so well for this ecosystem to take advantage all these people of ecosystem have their investments all over india and abroad the children are studying abroad but the young kashmiri boy or girl of a commoner is getting affected by terrorism getting affected by poor education system getting affected by hartals getting affected by no jobs so this is where religion has got nothing to do with this religion radicalization is a separate topic mm. which motivates boys to join tanzims because they are not told the right thing we know terrorist when i was a brigade commander in handwara i have spoken about it earlier the incoming the infiltrating groups when they were inside indian territory and when we were surrounded surrounded them and the encounters are going on the young boys after few days are crying on the radio set to their handlers in pakistan ki aap to keh rahe the yahan par islam khatre mein hai yahan par religion ke upar pabandi hai yahan par every day morning we are listening to azan from the masjids hmm. in the local uh, villages aur aapne kaha marwa diya humko yahan la kar ke khane ko kuch nahi hai they used to be literally crying and this is a type of propaganda which the young boys are fed in pakistan occupied kashmir and pakistan so that they you know recruit themselves for jihad in kashmir thanks to the internet thanks to the social media the reality is now very clear to probably everyone who has access to social media and internet even in pakistan so to take the attention away from their domestic issues pakistan deep state and establishment always plays up the kashmir card that is the tragedy of kashmiri people about the abrogation of article 370 and 35a us goc 15 co met the union home minister mr uh, amit shah towards the end of june 2019 uh, you called for a breakfast meeting with him at about 7 am in the morning uh, and that's where you learn about what's going to happen tell us more about what was discussed uh, yeah this was uh, on 26 27th of june 2019 Shri Amarnath Ji Yatra was to commence with the fact from 1st of July the same year, and the Union Home Minister Mr. Amit Shah was visiting Jammu and Kashmir, basically to take the review of the situation and the security situation prior to commencement of Shri Amarnath Ji Yatra. So 26 June we had normal meetings where everyone was there from all the forces, all the departments, civil administration, intelligence agencies, and we finished at about 11:30-12 uh, in the night. and when i got back home at 2 in the night i got a call i written about this in my book in great detail mm. i get a call that uh, tomorrow morning 7 o'clock there is a breakfast meeting with the union home minister i said okay 3 o'clock i get a call again as to what would you like to have for breakfast <laughs> so my instant reply was okay anything which everyone else will have i will also have that is when i was told that uh, no this meeting is only one on one only yourself and the union home minister would be present and uh, that's what it is so leaving other things apart when i reached there the union home minister did offer dhokla aloo ka paranthas and uh, lavish breakfast and then this meeting lasted for about 45 minutes or so so a lot of things were discussed and uh, situation think like how we are in control of the situation what if something is done and uh, you know lc how will manage the line of control what are the options with pakistan and what can happen what are the you know contingencies within the valley if and but everything was thread by discussed and uh, i will not go into much details but ultimately it was uh, where is the assurance who i said sir i assure you nothing will happen because as a team security forces 
I was very clear we will be able to handle the situation because I written in the book there were certain instances in the past month or two where we were in total control of the situation. Hmm. And I was very sure we will not allow it to uh, go beyond a point. And then it was uh, the same question as to who is responsible. I said, sir, I take the responsibility. I am assuring you everything will be okay. And then uh, I said, sir, agar, agar kisi ko itihas likhna hai, to kisi na kisi ko itihas banana padega. Hmm. If we have to write history, someone has to make history. Then only it can be written. And I'm so happy that uh, I was part of that uh, writing of history, making of history. And today, Kashmir is on the path to progress and peace. Very wise words. Now, I, I asked you about this meeting because you mentioned that uh, the union minister, uh, home minister was on top of his game. Mr. Amit Shah, you say, was brilliantly researched, had plans and counter plans for every scenario. Now, how did you go about ensuring that you delivered your part of the promise and you made history? When, on the 5th of August 2019, when the abrogation of Article 370 and 35 was ratified by the Parliament and the Honorable President, we were very clear, we gave ourselves two aims. That is the team security forces, which includes Army, Jammu Kashmir Police, CRPF, intelligence agencies, civil administration and the whole team. We worked as a team there. The color of the uniform didn't matter and there was nothing, individual credits. Everything was teamed together. So we worked on two aims. One was, since it's the writ of the government that Article 370 and 35A have been abrogated, they must be implemented. Hindustan ki sar zami ke, ek ke inch ke upar Hindustan ki sarkar ka hukum chalega. This is non-negotiable. And Jammu and Kashmir is very much part of India. And there, the government of India's rate will run. This was the first aim or the first mandate we gave it to ourselves. Second part of it was, while doing so, we will make sure no innocent lives are lost, no property, public or private, is damaged, and the peace is maintained. We went about our job doing all this. A lot of people today compliment us that, you know, everything went well, it was peaceful, no lives are lost, no property was damaged. But those people do not know how much of hard work had gone into it to make sure the peace prevails. Uh, given the details, few of them in my book, as to what all actions we took before 5th of August, so that come 5th of August, nothing should happen. Mm -hmm. And the most challenging part was all those activities to maintain peace, prior to 5th of August, had to be done with utmost confidentiality. Pakistan should not come to know, or the inimical animal elements within the country and the state should not come to know what is going to come. The secrecy was maintained to the hilt. And that is how we, we were showing as if we are going about our job in a very normal way. And again, I written about in the book, on the day of 5th of August, Mr. Mr. Mahinder Singh Dhoni, a cricket captain, former cricket captain, was meeting me in the office, having dinner with me that evening. So this is the type of thing which were visible to others to suggest that everything is okay. You know, nothing is going to happen. Mm. So a lot of hard work went into it. And post 5th of August, a lot of coordination, a lot of hard work, and a lot of midnight oils, as we call it, had gone into to maintain peace. And I have seen Kashmir over the last 35 years. Those three months after 5th of August were the most peaceful three months in the history of terrorism of Kashmir of the last 35 years. Basically, many people will say, oh, there was a lot of normalcy, there was a lot of peace, etc. Because people were very scared. The Indian state had sort of instilled a, a deep sense of insecurity, that uh, all the phone lines, all freedoms, everything was suspended, all internet, landline, connection with the outside world. You know what many people have said. Um, New York Times called Kashmir a living hell of anger and fear. And several political leaders had been detained or jailed or call it what you want to. So I, I just want to ask you, because in your book you debunk all of this. 
uh, exactly this narrative by pakistan and the biased agencies which you named the various uh, you know newspapers and others also they projected the situation in kashmir total lockdown and you know breakdown internet shutdown this and that let me tell you only few of the police station jurisdictions hmm. single number police station jurisdictions out of some 120 odd police stations in jammu and kashmir crpc 144 was applied that too where some sensitive installations were there so that they don't get damaged otherwise and crpc 144 for the viewers more than four people assembly is prohibited below four you can roam around you can go to the grocery shop pick up the bread eggs milk you can go to the medicine shop pick up your medicines you can go about a business as any other day so even in those few police station jurisdiction the crpc 144 was taken away after few days now coming to the internet yes if shutting down internet for few days saves lives mm. and which actually happened the lives are saved i am for it i will give you the details of internet shutdown high speed internet wherein you can download the large video files which would have been sent by the isi and the pakistan propaganda machinery ispr those were not allowed high speed internet was not allowed 2g was restored after a few days line lines were restored immediately after a few days what does that mean that means anyone who has to make a bank transaction can do it anyone who has to upload his application for admission can do it anyone who has to make his railway or airline bookings or the hotel bookings can do it anyone who has to upload his tender can do it it may take a little longer for uploading but high speed internet where you can download the video files some videos picked up from palestine or syria and shown mm. as if this is happening in kashmir that was not allowed and that is what helped us in maintaining peace and saving lives like i said earlier it is because of such like things that three months there was a total peace and not a single civilian life was lost at the hands of security forces now coming to new york times and others saying there is a shutdown the high commissioners no, and, and they also put out photographs in various countries they also put out photographs Kashmir of people and jammu in who various in, groups who were in hospitals uh, yeah. general saab who had been blinded and all of this you remember all those photographs appeared suddenly so was that true yes. were there atrocities being committed on protesters i'm saying when there were no protests there were one or two protests here and there protests are a thing of the past now and if to maintain peace and save lives the police had done the action as per their standing operating procedures no life was lost where people were saying yahan khoon ki nadiyan beh jayengi tirange ko kandha dene wala koi nahi hoga so the ambassadors and high commissioner who are definitely and members of european parliament who are definitely unbiased people ambassador of germany ambassador of usa and australia canada and others were there hmm. they saw for themselves on ground in my book i have given a cutting of the newspaper where then german ambassador he himself had said i saw no lockdown his words quote and quote so this lockdown is a imagination of ispr propaganda machinery on kashmir narrative everyone was going about his own business in a very very normal way yes for the initial few days there were restrictions on internet which were there to maintain peace and not allow high speed uh, sure. video files downloading sure otherwise all the grocery shops were open all the atms were open all the hospitals were open all the medicine shops were open and anything for normal life things were open the trucks were applying the fresh and vegetables were coming into the uh, valley the livestock was there for uh, non vegetarians there was just no deficiency of any food item or even for that matter the petrol and diesel everything was readily available as any other day well general saab in your book and the title is kitne ghazi aaye kitne ghazi gaye it's a reference to kamran ghazi uh, one of the masterminds of the uh, pulwama attack who was neutralized by your forces now 
these terror attacks are they continuing what's the situation what do you believe i mean uh, you know there has been a lot of targeted killings of hindu sikhs um, outsiders labor who come into kashmir to work there uh, what is this due to is it a failure of law and order management or just intelligence or are these just desperate attempts to try and create instability my final question to you sir see i will never make a statement जैसे वो हिंदी में कहते हैं ना हवा में हवा में बात नहीं करूंगा आई विल ऑलवेज मेक अ स्टेटमेंट बेस्ड ऑन फैक्ट्स एंड फिगर्स देर आर सर्टन इंडस्ट्रीज ऑफ टेरर दैट इज हाउ मेनी टेररिस्ट किल्ड हाउ मेनी न्यू टेररिस्ट लोकल टेररिस्ट ज्वाइन द टेररिज्म तंजीम्स हाउ मेनी सिविलियंस गॉट किल्ड बाय द टेररिस्ट हाउ मेनी सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेज पर्सनल गॉट किल्ड इन द एनकाउंटर विद द टेररिस्ट एंड ऑल दीज आर द इंडस्ट्रीज ऑफ टेरर ग्राफ गोइंग अप और डाउन these numbers are available month on month quarter on quarter year on year all these indices from 2017 18 19 they are all showing a downward trend then there are peace indicators like how many days the schools are open how many hartals happened how many uh, hotel bookings are there how many flights and what is the occupancy of the hotels and what is the occupancy of the flights which is uh, which are coming in and how many people are earning how many somos are being bought new for the tourists how many tourists are coming in how many yatris are coming in and how many uh, ski bookings in gulmarg uh, skiing resorts all these are indicators of peace all the peace indicators compared to the previous years are up all the terror indicators are down and these are verifiable facts so this brings us to the point or the understanding or the analysis that peace is coming terrorism is going down and security situation is good now coming to your point of targeted killing of unarmed civilians based on either their ethnicity or their religion or their background now these are the acts of desperation mm. when you have a hindu family staying or a migrant laborer working in kashmir in their orchards or some factory his whereabouts are known to everyone and it's also known he does not have the capability to retaliate with a firearm so he is a soft target it is known what time he goes to work what time he comes back where he stays where his family he is unarmed so it's very easy for anyone to come and hit that individual these are acts of desperation himmat hai to security forces ke samne aao na but wo nahi hai kyunki dam nahi hai killing innocent unarmed civilians ye kahan ki bahadri hai but this makes sure they remain in the news so that is what is their agenda to remain in the news jihad khatam ho gayi hmm. the situation has gone somewhere else now now no one is wanting to do jihad they just want to remain relevant and kashmir ka to remain relevant because looking at the way pakistan is look at their military look at their economics look at their politics look at their diplomacy four major indic indicators or indices of any state all are in the doldrums less is said the better so what is there for them to now unite or rally behind kashmir but kashmir is seeing progress so how do you remain relevant with the reference to kashmir kill some innocents that is exactly what's happening and that is what people are reporting and newspapers are publishing they are not publishing that it is a crime against humanity mm -hmm. and a state is involved in it this is what is hurting and this needs to be taken note of by everyone who is a right thinking person general dilan thank you very much you have spoken frankly this evening and you have spoken with a great elan and conviction and i think that's really come across in this interview a uh, delightful speaking with you and god bless you and best of luck and of course a big salute to you for your service thank you very much sir thank you very much